Okay, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today I'm going to start with experiment 2 which is called conventional milling. So our objective of the experiment is to understand how to use the conventional milling machine and later we will manufacture a part just like how we did in the first experiment. So let's look at what is milling. Milling is the machining process of using rotary cutters to remove materials from a workpiece by advancing in a direction at an angle with the axis of the tool. So what it basically is, is for example if you have a workpiece, you can change its shape to any desired shape by forcing a piece of metal which is stronger than the material that uh, is used as your workpiece so as to cut through it and obtain the desired shape. Uh, it covers a wide variety of different operations and machines on scales from the small individual parts to large heavy duty uh, milling operations. It is one of the most commonly used processes in industry and machine shops today for machining parts to precise sizes and shapes. So on the right of the presentation you can see that uh, we have the diagram and on the top you can see the motor, uh, the head drive, the overarm, quill feed lever, the quill feed hand wheel, uh, the quill, the spindle. Uh, in the milling machine the spindle is the rotating object, the workpiece is stationary and it is placed on the work table. Uh, there is a swivel. The longitudinal traverse hand wheel, a saddle, a column, a vertical movement crank, cross traverse hand wheel. This means to move the uh, work table forward and backward. And the longitudinal traverse hand wheel is to move it left and right. And the vertical cramp movement is to move it up and down. So as you can see this is a 3 axis machine. Uh, there is also another part called the knee which is located below the machine and the base. Uh, there are specific safety rules to be followed for the milling machine. This includes that uh, safety glasses must be worn at all times. Uh, so if you are wearing the regular glasses it's fine but if you don't have any glasses you have to use eye protection because the uh, the workpiece as we are machining through it there will be chip formation and these chips might uh, fly off and hit you so make sure that you are protecting your eyes using any safety goggles the second rule is no long sleeves, no gloves, no open toe shoes no jewelry or watches so anything that could get stuck in the machine basically is prevented like uh, you are not allowed to use these uh, objects. Long hair must be secured behind your head. So if you are having long hair, ensure that you have secured it properly behind your head. Become thoroughly familiar with the machine before operating it. Know how to use the machine properly before trying it out on a workpiece. So try let's say the handles and all these things before you actually work with the workpiece. When in doubt, always ask a supervisor how to use the machine, let's say. Never use the mill when tired or rushed for time. So you have to be, let's say, prepared to do the workpiece. Don't work on it when you're tired or when you're doing it in a hurry. Because these could cause some errors and damage the machine or you could injure yourself. Only attempt work that you have been approved to do and are comfortable doing. Get additional training, refresher courses. This, uh, in case you want to learn more about this, you can come to me during office hours to discuss this, which will be after the spring break, of course. Never reach anywhere over, around, or near any rotating cutters. Uh, stop the machine every time the cutter is not cutting, not being used, or you are changing tools or parts. Only remove chips using gentle air blasts or chip brushes. Be aware of cutting tools. Removal of chips, you don't have to do it since the cleaners will clean it up. But ensure that you have protection so that let's say your hands don't get injured 
due to the chips because they are usually sharp uh, and so on there are again more rules that you can uh, read here but the more important ones we went through in the previous slide now regarding using the machine there are several steps to be followed it's called tramming the head, squaring the wires, setting spindle speed, using an edge finder, using the digital readouts, cutting fluids and their application, cutting tool holders, removing and installing cutting tools, cleaning the machine and calculating speeds and feeds. So tramming the head means the head of the vertical machine can be tilted from side to side and from front to back. So depending on the task that you need to do, maybe you are required to tilt it. Let's say if you want to drill at an angle. So accordingly the machine head can be adjusted. But typically in our case we will leave it vertical which is uh, since we are doing a basic shape. Squaring the vise. Uh, what is the vise? The vise is the object that is holding the workpiece. So squaring the vise means you are trying to adjust the workpiece with the vise uh, such that you know where your coordinates are. Let's say typically we take the bottom left corner as the origin. So you need to secure your workpiece properly to the vise and then uh, set your zeros. Setting spindle speed and high or low gearing. Uh, depending on the workpiece that you have, you have to decide what speed you have to run the machine at. For example, if you are using soft materials like wood, plastic, etc., the speed should be less. While if you are using aluminum, the speed has to be higher and so on. So the spindle speed can be adjusted on the machine. We will look at it in the video that I will post regarding how to use the machine. Using an edge finder. Uh, this is optional again, one must locate the edges of the part accurately. An edge finder is designed to use uh, to do this on edges with flat vertical surfaces. So there is another device which you can use as an edge finder but uh, we are not using this and it is not very important. But it is required if you are doing a really precise uh, machine operation. <coughs> using the digital readouts there are digital uh, there is a digital meter connected to the milling machine which will tell you the coordinates of x y and z so if you are not sure if you have reached a certain distance you can look you can adjust the display accordingly and it will tell you how much away you are from let's say the origin in x axis in y axis and in z axis Cutting fluids and their application. So depending on the material you are working with, there are different cutting fluids and these are generally designed to, pro uh, let's say, to provide the correct amount of lubricity, cooling, better surface finish, increased tool life and more. So for example, if you don't have a cutting fluid while working with uh, metals, what is going to happen? The tool might get damaged or let's say uh, the workpiece surface finish will be not that great so if you need it to be proper you have to use the exact type of fluid uh, for that particular material so again application is mentioned in the slide which is for aluminum steel plastic etc what are the types of uh, cutting fluid and how they are applied. Cutting tool holders, um, actually the tool holder is not provided in the one that we have. The tool holders are mainly used for us in a lathe machine, not in the milling machine. For us the tool is basically held in the spindle, which is uh, usually a mill bit. It's not a drill bit, it's a mill bit. Removing and installing cutting tools, this will be looked at when we are doing the experiment. Also cleaning the machine, uh, it is not for you, uh, it is mainly for the cleaners. We have already mentioned to them how to clean the machine. 
calculating speeds and feeds this is important because uh, you need to know how to adjust the speed and the feed rate the speed is the spindle speed the feed rate is the speed at which you are moving along the three different axes so if let's say for example if you increase the feed rate too much then you risk taking too big a bite and will break the cutter so what happens is the cutter will break if you increase the feed rate too much so if you are moving at a very high speed in x axis on the workpiece which is like a metal and uh, you are using a tool which is stronger than metal but still you are moving at a fast pace then the cutter will break if you decrease the feed rate too much you risk rubbing and will wear out the cutter so the tool will get damaged if you are wasting a lot of time with moving in the uh, desired axis this is uh, let's say it is not a big problem compared to the one above okay you increase the spindle speed too much what will happen then you will not cut but instead burn up the tool with friction so you must not increase the spindle speed too much and if you decrease the spindle speed too much your cut will be very slow so it's just that the operation will be slow but you don't risk anything but sometimes you will not be able to cut through the object how do you find the right balance the machine will be quiet you will be making chips which are nice and not discolored you will be removing material and the cutter will last so if you see that these are what, uh, what are happening then it's fine but if you find any of these that means something that you're doing is wrong now the part to be manufactured is the same shape that we had in experiment 1 uh, we will provide you with a workpiece of this dimension and the depth uh, it could be different from 7mm but anyways it has a certain depth so, and the material provided will be wood so you have been given all the coordinates everything you need to design it